Previously on Inside the Super Draft. If that guy isn't there, you know, we might be very willing to trade that for some allocation money. We're looking at different teams, what their needs may be, whether it's allocation money, whether we would like to acquire another a pick in the first round, and that's something that we're considering. There are some strikers here. We've been looking for strikers, and, and our concentration will definitely be a bit on that. You know, finding that diamond in a rough is, is a lot of fun too. Hey, I think this guy might have something special. As teams, players, fans, and media filled up the Baltimore Convention Center, Siggy Schmidt and the Seattle Sounders, holding the 11th overall pick, looked to take care of some business before the draft got underway. And the only two teams that have shown an interest are Philly in the 11, are Philly and now Vancouver. So we go back and say, look, you know, we'll do it now. For you know, to Vancouver. Hello, Tommy, Ziggy. Hey, uh, we're close to pulling this thing with another team, so I just want to throw it back to you whether you had interest in the 11. Yeah, I think we're, we're going to wait because it's probably to one guy that we have interest in. Paul uh, Villa as well. John Ziggy. Hey, uh, I talked to Peter a little bit last night in terms of whether you guys would have interest in, uh, in for allocation money getting our number 11. Everybody's on a wait and see. Our fallback is to do it with Portland. It's still the same argument. Is it money or is it player? Just looking at the roster, it helps us so much knowing that we have that. Nagby and Kitchen, those guys aren't going aren't to be there. Teta could be there. Salgado could be there. Maybe on an outside way, Manny Baba's there. Whatever, but we still said we need we need allocation more than the player. If, if it falls like we think, would we need Marshall allocation? might be there. Cruz might be there. One of the goalkeepers will be there. I can see, sure. I can see one of these. Gasky could be there. the trade up we thought there was five six guys that were what I would say you know can't miss guys but then uh, we couldn't get up into that group so then we felt uh, where we were at 11 that really you know maybe some guy would drop to 11 that would have an interest in but if everything went to form it might not so it's probably just as good being at 20 we needed some allocation money basically we're trying to look after the the continued development of this squad we needed an, uh, an additional foreign roster spot and the, the, the premise behind that was how do we justify spending thousand on a, on a roster spot for one year and we're able to bundle that in with the, the 11th pick. We had some interest from teams in, in going for that pick, someone to wait until the draft started and uh, our decision was let's get this done even before the draft starts uh, so we know we got the allocation money, we've got that behind us and, uh, and then we'll take it from there. As the details of the trade were finalized, the draft was officially underway and the Vancouver Whitecaps prepared to make some history. Folks, let's have some fun. Let's get started with the MLS Super Draft Live on ESPN. All right, so who are you picking? <laughs> so I'll wait for the clock to start and then I'll start. Then you can start writing. You look like you write a long time, write slow. Hello? Hey, Dominic. Wanted to know if we would move the first pick. But I think at this point we really like this guy. Yeah. They had plenty of time to do it before, so we're happy to do that. Yeah, go ahead and slow down. Dominic surprised you, you know, right at the at the waning hour you had all the 
maybe he's just trying to get me to call a timeout. <laughs> Trevor, I want to see some emotion out of you. Right when he finishes his speech, yeah. that's when you get up and walk over with Bob. Salgado to me. Salgado to the roof, right? Here's the pick. had the luxury of ha having Omar in camp um, early in the year and then you know when you look at the draft you want the best available talent and um, he's a guy that we feel would given the, the right environment um, the physical qualities being 6-4 and then unique touch on the ball and a, a good scoring sense um, we feel like we can do something special with him he's going to take a little time to, to develop um, but when we evaluate what we're looking for um, we're going to be patient with him because we think uh, th there's a great quality in the kid. We could turn him into a, a real force. It might take a year or two, but philosophically, we're willing to wait. Uh, that's how special we think he can be. While the Vancouver staff celebrated with its newest player, the Portland staff had reason to rejoice, as they were going to be able to select their number one target, Darlington Nagby. Vancouver Whitecaps select a member of the U-20 national team member of Generation Adidas forward, Omar Salgado. Okay, bring it in. <laughs> Is it ready? The run up excited? How excited? All right, I want you to run this up there. Can you run it? Go. Hey. Well done, man. You have f***ing merit. Congratulations. Hey. You've got another great player. Well done, buddy. Stop it. Does it? Stop it. Stop no chance. Are you asking who we took? Said, what do you want for him? Nothing. We don't want nothing for him. It's history, man. This is our history. Oh. With the second pick of the first round of the 2011 MLS Super Draft, the Portland Timbers select from the University of Akron, a member of the generation of Adidas, Darlington Nagby. I'm happy for Vancouver. They got a player that they wanted, and we got a player that we really wanted. So. You look at Omar Salgado, we had him in camp, we rated him very, very highly and, and obviously so did Vancouver. With Darlington Nagby, we absolutely loved him and looking forward to see what he can do for, for the team and the organisation. We thought there were a lot of good players, we were obviously delighted, yeah, we probably saw through our reaction to get Darlington and I think everyone in the top five probably came out very, very happy. I think with Darlington, he, he has the unknown factor and he has the well factor in addition to that. I think he's a player that can contribute in the first year, and especially being an expansion team, we need players who can come in and can contribute. Possession of the first overall pick gave the Whitecaps total control over its outcome, but their eighth overall selection wasn't nearly as predictable. As picks three through seven were rattled off, the staff watched and waited. This is the pick that we're going to Hey, Sater, it's Colin. No, we still prioritize any Baba. We're between those two and we're going to get one of them. So. To go for Nancho, but yeah. I'm okay with that, you know. Uh, yeah, it feels, uh, definitely feels a need for us, you know. The Houston Dynamo select from the University of Akron. A member of Generation Adidas, defender Kofi Sarkozy. Woohoo! That scared me. This is turning out pretty well. Huh? Yeah, I think it's two generations of Adidas that you feel really good about their cap. Yeah. One fits a need. Yep. Good. I'm happy we got him. Fits a need too. Yeah, he does. Yeah, they're good. Go ahead. With the eighth pick of the first round of the 2011 MLS Super Draft, the Vancouver Whitecaps select from the University of Akron, midfielder Michael Anshaw. Our one through eight, we were pretty sure as to how that would all shake down. And uh, with Nanchoff, we, we saw a quality uh, guy that we think could step on the pitch right away. Um, unique to even uh, Americans is, is his ability to serve a ball. Um, and he fits a need, uh, and, he, and he's a GA. So there were so many things that led us to him. The trade with Seattle had been announced between the fourth and fifth picks. And as their new number 11 selection neared, the Timbers began looking to shop it for some more allocation money. I think Jan's dorm is as interesting as f***ing to the dorm as well. Hey, that might take one good. Hey, Tom. Oh, sorry, Tim, Gavin. 
any interest in number 11? Get DC on the phone. So it's Philadelphia. Okay. Get Philly. Philly first. Who's picking up the phone for Philly? Can you see? There you go. Is your phone working? Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any interest in number 11? Hey, uh, Ben Gavin speaking. Good, mate. Any interest in number 11? We're going to try and put K back in our bank with allocation. The number 11. From who? Philly? From three. Philly, Philly, Houston, and DC. The Union and Dynamo were waiting to see if a player would be available before committing. But as soon as the 10th pick was announced, Dominic Kinnear made his move. Sporting Kansas City select CJ Sapong. I think it made a good trade and so did we. We got the 11th pick, they got a little bit of allocation. We ended up making that back by, by trading the 11th pick. So all in all, we put a little bit of money in the bank. We came out on top with a foreign spot and, and the player that uh, we would have taken uh, in number one. On the next episode of Inside the Super Draft, the draft day debates continue as the Whitecaps and Timbers kick off the second round. He had a great engine. Uh, he had some fight to his game. And will Seattle be dealing any of its second round picks? By the way, we are the kings of the second round. We are. <laughs> All the inside access from round two from Baltimore on the final episode of Inside the Super Draft.